Hi guys, welcome to Iron Horse Weekly episode 30. 30 weeks of doing model railway nonsense and shenanigans. This week I'm going to build a new layout. It's been a long time coming, hopefully I can get at least a base mod built up and we're going to look at how the process went in doing that. We're also going to take a look at Rail Simulator, Train Simulator 3 to be exact, and the Helgen Class 17, quite possibly the biggest regret of my life. Let's find out why. All right then, let's begin the absolute sideshow that is me attempting to build a base frame. I have to fully admit now, before we get even further into this mess of an event, that woodworking at school was always the subject I was found to be staring at the wall, out the window, or drawing something in my planner. But that said, it didn't all completely fly out of one ear from the other and a little bit was retained by the grey matter between my ears and after borrowing my father-in-law's drill again because I still haven't gone and bought my own and using the wrong size drill bit because again I'm using what I have to hand I struggled through and despite cutting my finger several times I managed to get together at the end of this facade a nice little frame for the for the baseboard and got it all together. This screw is giving me a lot of trouble and this is because I didn't drill a pilot hole properly. It was off centre and it caused so many problems and then the screw was going the wrong way and blah 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 blah. And I am fully aware that there's going to be many 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 people in the comments saying that I am X, Y and Z and that they could build a better baseboard in their sleep. And why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And why didn't you buy this? And why didn't you buy that? Oh, you know, if you got this, you could have done that. Not well, that's all very well and good after the fact I've built this thing, but not to worry. As long as it doesn't fall down in one humongous pile of timber and splinters, I will consider it somewhat of a success. It's quite amusing actually because you can see me learning as I'm doing this and even though I've built baseboards before the baseboard that my current layout is on is actually several IKEA tables held up with table legs and I didn't actually build it I just screwed the legs in and that what was it it was cheap mode if you will previous baseboards have always been just very simple frames um, I think the first baseboard I used was literally just several pieces of 12 inch by uh, six foot that's it okay after much drilling and swearing and things the baseboards are never going to be perfect building baseboards is my one area of model railways which i hate but i refuse to pay someone to do it for me so we have the main baseboard there with no more nails on the legs in place The idea is just to have them held in place for the time being with the normal nails and then we're going to put caster wheels on the bottom of them. So that's the main, for lack of a better word, the main layout. And that's the, for lack of a better term, the fiddle yard traverser. So yeah, unfortunately all I can do now is just wait for the glue to dry and then attack it again tomorrow right then so here we are this is the baseboard done now i absolutely hate making baseboards you need to understand this i medically hate it there are different aspects of this hobby which we all enjoy or don't enjoy this is my one piece of the hobby which i really do not enjoy at all it's far from perfect at the minute i need to take some of these screws out and better countersink them so they sit flush with this front piece here and I can just finish that but that's later on so I've no points either the plan was to get some points fitted to it today and get some track down however when I went to the model shop they didn't have the core 75 points which I'm going to need but I'm using the DCC concepts oh, legacy uh, bullhead track for this build as you all know it's a memorial build for my dad so I want it to be as good as it can possibly be I'm hoping to, even though it's only small, I have test the range of all my skills I've learned over the past five years, four years, whatever it was, whatever it's been. 
hopefully I'll come up with something which is exhibition worthy as well because that is the plan to hopefully get it accepted to an exhibition or two because it is portable the scenic area is going to be six foot this is six foot thereabouts and the uh, filly yard over there is about three foot so the fact I can't lay a track is a bit of a bummer so I'm going to just lay some paint down on the baseboard itself today so it's at least it's a nice brown earthy colour so that when we do come to lay a track should there be any space or gaps in the paint or scenics or whatever at least it's going to look okay so let's get on with that First coat down, let's try for a second one. Okay, I'm using the front facing camera again. You can never get the gain right on this. It's either too bright or too dark or whatever. But anyway, it's the only way I can see what I'm doing. That's the second coat applied now, nice and thick, dark. All I'm using is this artist. I've got loads of this stuff. It's probably not the right stuff to use, but there's loads of it. It's really thick. So I've done the full bit. This bit will have a back scene on it. A nice ID back scene. a really high quality photographic one, similar to these ones here. Not sure which one I'm going to go for. Something simple, something rural, I think. So there we are. So it's time. It's about half past nine now in the morning. So I'm going to let this dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to go on to the next part. Well, what I can without any points anyway. So then, what on earth do you do when you've nothing else you can do with your layout and you're waiting, literally waiting, and watching paint dry? Well, I've decided to set up my camera in front of Train Sim World 3 and play with a little bit of a DMU. So, let's have a look at that. All right, you are really going to have to excuse me here because I am not a Twitch streamer or a video game streamer or anything like that. I have literally pointed my camera at my television screen with my Xbox plugged into it. And there we go. So without further ado, we're driving the 101 DMU where I'm trying to get the thing set up. We're going to bring it to service and hopefully... I can I can get it to Manchester on, on time without too many problems. As you can see here, I'm trying to move the damn thing, but nothing's happening. I don't think I've got it in the right gear. Honestly, it would be a bloody chain driver. Okay, let's put the reverser into forward and first gear. And get that right. Bit of throttle. There we go. We're <laughs> slowly, slowly moving away. Hopefully I can get this thing to the reverse loop. And then I've got to change ends. It's a pretty, pretty game, is this? This is the Xbox version, but it's um, it's nice just to do something a bit different. I say different, it's still related to trains, but these are digital trains. Ones you can just control and play with and yada, 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 yada. So we've got the trains playing for a little bit now. If this is something you want to skip, then feel free just to fast forward past this bit. It's only for a little bit, this is just another one of my hobbies and I'm literally just doing this until that bleeding paint dries on the layout, then we can jump back into it. Stop, stop, please stop, please stop. Have I put the brakes on? I have, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and too much braking. There we go. The old brakes on these old DMUs are absolutely just no good at all. I'm so glad they replaced them with proper brakes on these second generation DMUs. So we'll just move it forward, and then I need to close this side down, put the tail lights on this end, then move to the other end of the train. 
and hopefully once I've done that we can get the thing underway. Right, we're at the other end. I've just got the cab set up and we're on our way. I think we now got to move this into Leeds Station. If you've ever been to Leeds, you'll know that the approach to Leeds is just an absolute mess of, of lines and loops and speed restrictions and it's just absolute chaos. And even back in the 90s, when I was a lad going up trains with my dad and my family, I always remember very clearly that the train coming back into Leeds would almost always stop and just seem to wait for 5, 10, 15 minutes until there was actually a path to get in there. Okay, that's another train simulator. Let's see how that paint's going on. Yeah, that acrylic is really thick. It's taking so long to bloody well dry. I even got our lashes hair dry. <laughs> uh, this does help improve things, and you'd be glad to know that the layout dried uh, to a working degree pretty much 10 minutes after this, and I nearly fell asleep whilst doing it. Right, so even though I can't get the points down yet. I'm just going to lay a little bit of track and do a little bit of testing for uh, the station loop here. Well, what, what, what will be the station loop? Obviously, there'll be the point in there, so I can have a run around the point in there. I've got these little tiny track screws from uh, DCC Concepts, and it even comes with a little pack of uh, drill bits, you know, for your uh, for your pin vise there. What I want to do is just strategically pick out a place. But I'm not going to knock all these screws over. I'm just have a screw in there like that. Through that sleeper, and a little bit into the baseball. There we go. Just to get it started a little bit. That's it. And then what I'll do. Screw that back on there for now. There's a little bit there. Just screw it in. The benefit of doing it this way is that when you come to adjust your track, it's not it's not glued in place. So you can easily take it up and adjust it and move it when the time comes. Pretty straightforward, easy enough to do. Right, I've got one in. Let's put some more in. Do some more up this end, fasten the filler yard down and try and run a train on it. Okie dokie, I've got some power sort of rigged up to the back of this track here. Now these two tracks aren't connected yet, that's something that will be done when the wiring works. But I'm just going to move this loco forward. Obviously it's going to die 
when it gets over, but as you can see, it works just fine. Obviously, it's there, it's dying now because there's no power going to this, this part of the track. But that is certainly proof of concept. Oh, yes. Right then, so on your screens now you want to see a Helgen or Helgen Helyan class 17 Clayton in the Rebel Cement livery. Now, <clears throat> pay attention because this isn't the original one I had. Long term subscribers to the channel will remember that long ago I actually had one of these and it was sound fitted with a Hornby TTS decoder and blah 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 blah. blah. Now, for some reason or another, I got it into my head that I wanted to sell the model. I think it was because the motor on it was quite noisy. And that one thing led to another. And uh, I sold it on. And when I did, I almost immediately regret selling it. Because that model led to a lot of, well, I suppose publicity, I suppose. Um, Jenny, Jenny Kirk saw that I had weathered mine. And she said, I have one just like it. Would you weather mine? I said, of course I would. And then DCC Concepts saw what I did to Jenny's. They really liked it. And they used the photos I took of mine in one of their publications. So there we are. And there's me left now without any Class 17s whatsoever. And then the Ribble Cement wagons came out. And I regretted it even more. And I searched high and low for a Ribble Cement Class 17. I could just not find another one and it was such a big big regret of mine i'm thinking i'm never ever ever going to find another one of these now because they were limited edition to begin with so unless helgen reprinted them or redid them i wasn't gonna get a chance to get another one anyway thankfully um i having a random conversation with jen i just happened to mention this fact to her and she said well i don't actually run the one that you weathered for me it just sort of sits there in the collection looking pretty would you like to trade it with me needless to say i jumped at the chance and this model you're seeing now is technically well actually it's jenny's but it's the one that i weathered for her and i'm happy to say that it's back on the layout now and it's shunting those little cement wagons from clear cement the akira scale ones really nice wagons by the way so I need to get a few more of these. I've got three of these and I've got three of the rubbish cement ones. But I really need, uh, I think, two more sets to make a full rake of nine. And I can just do some cement shunting and poking around on one of you. Taking it from siding to siding. But it just goes to show that these these things are more than models. They're more than just a distraction. They have, they have purpose. They have depth. And dare I say, some of them even have a soul. Um, this little Helgen is absolutely no exception to that rule. It's a beautiful bit of kit. It's not without its faults, but I do really, really love the model. And it lends itself well to being weathered, which of course is something I really enjoy. Uh, I don't think it ever got this dirty in real life, um, especially since it had a repaint into the original green after this. But, you know, it, rule one always applies. And I really do enjoy it. So I shall leave you with a few shots of the humble little Helgen Class 17 running around my layout.
So that's it for this week guys, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help me out a great deal. So until next week, cheers now, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.